tēnā tātou e tewi, ko moku nui arangi tōku ingoa, he uri tēnei no ngā mātāwaka, o ti rā he uri no te aroa waka, no takitimu, no horouta, no mātātua, no tainui rā hoki. He uri tēnei no rangi wewehi, no te roro o te rangi, rā whakaue, tainu atu rā ki a mania poto, whakawhiti atu rā ki te tai rāwhiti, ki wera tūpuna a māha ki a rongo whakāta. Nō reira tēnei au e mihi nei, ki aku nui ki o kurahi, ki a koutu hatoa. So my name is Moko Nui Arangi, Moko for short. I'm of Māori descent, but within the Māori world we we always give reference to um, either our tribal landscapes, tribal references, or to our ancestors and the the canoes that we we identify with, meaning the canoes that our ancestors came upon to to this these islands um, from the the wider Pacific. So yeah, that's me, um, and. I'm here as a tamoko practitioner, as a, a young revivalist of this art form which is particular to Māori tamoko, which comes out of our, our wider Pacific practice of tātātou, being the, the tattooing, the marking of the body in its many, many forms. So for the Māori world, moko as a taonga tukuiho, it's a it's a it's a real treasure which is an art form that we associate strongly with our with our ancestors and all of their histories and all of their mana, all of their prestige and it, you know other words I can't think of in English to to better describe this, but it's it's. It's a very powerful uh, art form within our culture, and and we hold it in high regard, both in its physical appearance, but also with its internal processes that it helps facilitate, of growth, of of self articulation, of beautification, uh, of storytelling, and and knowledge, kind of archiving. In terms of values, you know, there, there's a strong impetus to, to keep this art form alive as, a, as an act of decolonial uh, work, as an act of reclaiming that which has been lost and was almost lost, as an act of strengthening Māori within a globalised world. And this is this kind of constant um, search for who we are and what, what we are about and how we want to manifest that these days. So these are kind of the under underlying values of this practice. Really, it's about looking after our people. Not only tamoko, because this does not live and exist in isolation from the other art forms. Um, it draws strongly on carving and weaving, as well as bolsters each other, and the language revival and knowledge knowledge holding. So it's part of this greater fabric of 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 the culture and cultural revival and for that reason you know it's not a job uh, it's not an art form it, it's not tattoo it's a thing much much greater than any of those and yet as a job and as an art form and uh, with all of its needs and all of its realities you know it, it's a real honor and it's a real uh, privilege to to do this work within the the context of history but also for our people um, to help heal and grow and send people out after they've been here, you know, full of new energy and, and off to do their, reshape their life, you know. At the same time, I come from a family with a bit of a, an appreciation for aesthetics. I love beautiful things, so to make people more beautiful it's always a really exciting process, you know, to, to be involved in and to see people light up through that process. To explain this practice today, I have to put myself within the context of, you know, where the revival is at for, for us as a people. We have what I would call classical moko, and because European 
um, painters, photographers came here and kind of captured these images of our ancestors in the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. We have this fixed idea of what Māori moko is, what it looks like, and, it, and there's kind of uh, a frozen in time nature to that, which again is it, it's a, it's an outward imposition, which we've then taken upon ourselves. So my work is both, you know, a dream and a journey to to get as close to that as possible. What we see in those paintings, what we see in those photos, despite there being a loss of technical knowledge on how to do that. That's one aspect. The other aspect is, is pushing forwards. And in pushing forwards, I'm actually jumping further back and referencing the, the, the older ancestral connections to the Pacific, which we as Māori people have uh, through our migration. So my moko, if, if one were to look at my work, they go, hmm, it looks really not like the images we see in the Goldie and the Lindau paintings. It looks very geometric or you know quite bold and that's my that's my kind of parallel journey of of trying to approach moko as we see it in its classical form um, heavily influenced by carving and the other one is acknowledging our, anse our old ancestral connections aesthetics and and kind of finding a nice playfulness and depth and, and breadth in that and then seeing how those two kind of you know dance between each other come in and out and a lot of our people are really feeling that they you know I'm, I'm always surprised at how that Māori come and they want this geometric mahi and they go okay you know there's a flavor there's a hunger for it wanting to acknowledge our broader connections where we have been kind of you know pigeonholed a bit in our identity by outsiders so that's the historical context. I am an outlier in what I do. You know, I'm definitely not of the normal um, style. And then on top of that, I'm not a machine artist. Um, you know, we're all familiar with tattooing, mostly done with the tattoo machine. And the revival of our art form here in Aotearoa has has had a huge surge of momentum and accessibility through the tattoo machine. Um, but I, I've always grown up with a a deep kind of hunger to see our traditional tools being used again and along with its its sacredness and its ritual that kind of easily sits around the tools so that's been my process my journey has been to find people who can teach me these tools and these methods and then try to get myself to the point where I can do what our ancestors did for me that's a Monday to Friday um, process, you know, mostly Māori Pacific clients who, who want to reconnect and, and, and support this art form. We meet here in the studio um, and we lay out a corridor, we lay out um, who we are, uh, what we're about and elements that we really want to acknowledge within this tattooing process, whether it be past things or future things or you know, it's different for every client, really. But through that process, I kind of, I will come to a place of understanding what we want to articulate, um, what's most succinct and most powerful, and then the patterns that are appropriate for that person at that time. And, and then we come to, you know, laying them out on the mat and, and drawing them up and marking those patterns.
It is slower than the machine. You know, we are we are using hand tools um, made from wood and bone. This is the uhi. Um, this is a smaller facial tool for our facial work. Um, but mostly larger pieces, you know, it is a multi-day process or it, it's, it's carried out over several months. I like the fact that it, it has its own pace. I think there's something within this, this pace which is a bit of the old world. You know, it's not instant gratification and it's not... You don't receive so much that you walk out not quite knowing what happened to you and what any of it's about. You know, there's always just enough to take home and have to process it. Um, and you grow into it, I believe. So with that growing into it, you know, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's room for self-reflection, for introspection, for um, reorientating yourself um, about your values and about your, your direction in life. And then we, we revisit, you know, and we add a little bit more and add a little bit more. And um, some really beautiful growth happens in that space, you know. So it is frustratingly slow sometimes, but I, I really believe in the power of the process and, and us letting go of everything being fast and instant and kind of within the, the time spectrum that we want. As you know, our elders always tell us, things happen at the right time when they're meant to happen. So I've learned to trust that, which has been a, a, a you know, beautiful thing. I mean, within Te Ao Māori, we, we don't really speak about dressing ourselves um, in relation to tamaho. You know, it's not like um, worded or conceptualised in that way. But there's definitely this feeling as people get more and more tattooed. Um, more and more marked that they are coming into themselves and and they are feeling a fuller manifestation of themselves and you know sometimes when we put on clothing and we're not quite ready for it within our personality it doesn't sit properly on you same can happen with tattoos you know one's not quite ready to wear it and and you can feel that awkwardness or you can feel that hollowness and then there's other times when um, when it happens over the right amount of time, you really see them grow into it. So our process is quite collaborative. Um, I'm, I'm very much one who enjoys people expressing who they are and what they're about and finding um, what's important to them to carry. And then through that, I, I offer my, my expression of that information and tuning into kind of their energy lay out my ideas and but it, most of the time it's a collaboration between me and the body i can have my idea and as soon as i touch the body with pen draw lines quickly things go yes or no you know and then you you end up running down this path of tuning into what the body needs what i think the patterns need to be and and how they can relate to each other and then what the client likes and that's a totally open um, channel of, of collaboration. To find that sweet spot between all of us, I think is a, a really awesome thing. It's hard to do every day. It's quite exhausting, but, <laughs> but it's, you know, that's where the excitement is.